What do you think about that uh, mutually assured destruction, that very simple, almost to the point of caricaturing game theory idea that does seem to be at the core of why we haven't blown each other up yet with nuclear weapons? Do you think there's some truth to that, this kind of stabilizing force of mutually assured destruction? And do you think that's going to hold up <laughs> through the 21st century? I mean, it's... It has it has held yes. There has, there's definitely truth to it that it was a, a you know it's a Nash equilibrium. Yeah, are you surprised it held this long? Um, Isn't it crazy? It is crazy when you factor in all the like near miss accidental firings. Yes, that makes me wonder. Like you know you know are you familiar with the like quantum suicide thought experiment? No. Where it's basically like uh, you have a you know like a Russian roulette type scenario. Uh, set, hooked up to some kind of quantum event, you know, uh, particle splitting um, or paraparticle splitting. And if it, you know, if it goes A, then the, the gun doesn't go off and it goes B, then it does go off and it kills you. Because you can only ever be in the universe, you know, assuming like the Everett branch, you know, multiverse theory, you will always only end up in the in the branch where you continually make, you know, option A comes in. Yeah. But you run that experiment enough times, it starts getting pretty damn, you know, out of the, 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 the tree gets huge. There's a million different scenarios, in, but you'll always find yourself in this, in the one where it didn't go off. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so from that perspective, you, it, you are essentially immortal. Because someone and and you will only find yourself in the set of observers that make it down that path. Yeah. So it's 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 but that, kind of that a, doesn't mean that does well that, that does doesn't mean you're st you're still not going to be fucked at some point in your life. No, you, of course not. No, I'm not. I'm not advocating like that. We're all in, immortal because of this. It's just like a fun thought experiment. And the point is, it, it like raises this thing of like these things called uh, observer selection effects, which Bostrom and Nick Bostrom talks about a lot, and I think people should go read. Um, it's really powerful, but I think it could be overextended that logic. I'm not sure exactly how it can be it, i just feel like you can get you can um over generalize that logic somehow well no Not i mean it leads you into like solipsism which is a very dangerous mindset again if everyone like falls into solipsism of like well i'll be fine that's a great way of creating a very you know self-terminating environment um but uh, my point is is that with the nuclear weapons thing um there have been at least i think it's 12 or 11 um near misses of like just stupid things like uh there was moonrise over norway and it made weird reflections off some glaciers in the mountains which set off i think the alarms of norad uh norad radar and that put them on high alert nearly ready to shoot and it was only because um the head of the russian military happened to be at the un in new york at the time that they go like well wait a second why would why would they fire now when their guy is there? And it was only that lucky happenstance, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen very often, where they didn't then escalate it into firing. And there's a bunch of these different ones. Stanislav Petrov, like, saved the, the person who should be the most famous person on earth, because he's probably on expectation saved the most human lives of anyone, like billions of people, by ignoring Russian orders to fire because he felt in his gut that actually this was a false alarm. And it turned out to be, you know, very hard thing to do. Um, and there's so many of those scenarios that I can't help but wonder at this point that we aren't having this kind of like selection effect thing going on. Because you look back and you're like, geez, that's a lot of near misses. But well, of course, we don't know the actual probabilities that they would have lent, each one would have ended up in nuclear war. Maybe they were not that likely. But still, the point is, it's a very dark, stupid game that we're playing. Um, and it is an absolute moral imperative, if you ask me, to get as many people thinking about ways to make this like very precarious. Because we're in a Nash equilibrium, but it's not like we're in the bottom of a pit. You know, if you would like map it topographically, um, it's not like a stable ball at the bottom of a thing. We're not in equilibrium because of that. We're on the top of a hill with a ball balanced on top. And just at any little nudge could send it flying down and, you know, nuclear war pops off and hellfire and bad times. Uh, on the positive side, life on Earth will probably still continue. And another intelligent civilization might still pop up. Maybe. Uh, several yeah. millennia after. It would depend. Pick your X risk. Depends on the X risk. Nuclear war, sure. That's one of the perhaps less bad ones. Uh, <laughs> green goo through synthetic biology. Very bad. Will turn you know destroy all uh, you know organic matter yeah. uh, through you know it's basically like a biological uh, paperclip maximizer. Also bad. Or AI type you know mass extinction thing as well would also be bad. Shh, they're listening. Shh. 